This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're off to a futuristic city. Well, what's gonna matter? Are we gonna have agents? We're gonna have clerks? Uh, we're gonna have scholars and we're gonna have merchants. All within Capital Lux. This is a game for two to four players. Takes about 30 minutes to play. It's sort of a card game. Uh, so let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Capital Lux is three rounds long, and what you're trying to do during the game is have a certain type of card have the most of it without going over the numbers that are in the capital. This here is the capital. You have four different types of cards. We have the agent, we have the clerk, we have the scholar, and we have the merchant. And each of those four suits are in the game. At the beginning of the game, you'll get five or six cards, depending on the amount of players. You will select two of these cards to keep, and then you'll pass the rest of them over to a neighbor and they will do the same to you. So you'll be getting new cards to select. You'll continue doing this until you have six cards. So at the end of the drafting round, it might look something like this. I have six cards in this example. Now on your turn, you're going to take one of your cards in your hand. You're gonna select one. You're gonna place it face up, either in front of you in your hometown or into the capital. So if I place it in my hometown face up, this essentially says I have a value of six of the green suit, which is the scholar. Now I would have played this in front of me if I thought that my total number here would be lower than or equal to that the total numbers in this suit in the capital at the end of the round. Now if I didn't want to place it in front of me, I can place it here. Now anytime you place a number in the capital, essentially you're going to take the ability on the card that's there. And in this case it just says take the top card of the deck. So I would take this and I would just add it to my hand. Now you just play one card and that's the next player's turn, but let's say somebody plays a card into the capital on the agent. You'd get to take one of these cards here from the modifier deck, you'd look at it secretly, and then you'd place it face down above one of the other suits. This will modify the total numbers in that suit at the end of the round. If someone places one on the cleric, you take the smallest number from any one of these other three different suits and place it in front of you. So let's say, all right, we'll take this and we'll put it in front of us. And if someone plays in front of the merchant, they get to take one of these huge yellow coins here and they keep that for the end of the round. I'll show you what those do later. Now this continues until one player runs out of cards and then everyone else gets one last turn. If you have cards still in your hand at the end of your turn, you must place them face up in your hometown just like this. And then we take the cards that are on top as modifiers and we place them in that area. They range from minus three to plus four. Then we go through each of the suits. We add up all the numbers here, including any modifiers. And we look at everyone and see if you have more than this total number. So if you had more than 14, you'd lose all the cards in front of you that are face up of that suit. Otherwise, you'd see who has the most without going over. That player who has the single highest without going over would take the highest card from here, in this case it's a five, they'd place it face down in their own area if they had gotten it, because it's going to be bonus points at the end of the game. If it was tied, player who's in first order would get the highest one, and the next tied player would get the next highest one if possible. Now on this one, I'm actually higher than this, so normally I would have to lose all of the face-up cards of the cleric out. But I have a coin. For each coin, I can spend to modify it by one. So instead of having a five, I actually have a four, and I'm even with that, so I'm good. And let's say I had the most, great, then I would be able to take this and put it face down. This would be worth four points here at the end of the game. This would go face down in my hometown. And you'd do the similar thing for the last two suits. Now getting for ready for the next round is interesting. The modifier cards all get put back and shuffled like normal, and everyone's gonna get the same amount of cards to start as they did in the first round. But all the cards in the capital stay, all the cards in the hometown stay, so things continue to go. And you continue to do this until the end of the third round. At the end of the third round, you'd add up all the points in your hometown. You'd add up all of the bonus cards that you had gotten throughout the game as straight up points, four and five, for example. And then you'd add up any unused gold as one point. Whoever has the most is the winner. All right, well, there's Capital Lux. Uh, if you like filler, shorter card games that pack a punch for as short and as easy as they are, this is definitely gonna be one that you might wanna check out. Uh, I like filler games, I like quick games. This game has very simple mechanisms. I mean, you're literally just playing a card in your turn 
and you can only play it in one of two different areas. That's it. Uh, if you play it in front of you, you're done. If you play it somewhere else, you're doing the ability that it tells you what to do. So is the game really good with it being that simple? And I could say yes, the game is good. Now it's gotten a lot of hype over the last, I'd say, you know, three or four months. Uh, and it is a good, solid game. I'm not sure it lives up to the amount of hype people have been giving it, but man, it's very, it still is very good. So I'm trying to like push it out from the hype saying, uh, let's get off the hype train of this. It's not like the best, uh, you know, uh, filler game ever to come out. Uh, but it is very good. If I'd never heard of it before it showed up, I'd be like, wow, this game is solid. It's one of those games that as you're playing it, we kept playing it and going, man, this game's good, man, this game's good. It is very good. And I like that even though the choices are, e are easy, there's still a lot to think about. Uh, you've got, you know, those actions where you're taking the, the secret cards of, of, you know, modifying and putting them somewhere. And you're watching what they're doing and you go, huh. They have a lot over there. They probably are trying to bump that up. I'm going to jump in there too. Or they put it over here like, oh, they don't have any of those. Maybe they're trying to totally screw this guy over here, but they could be totally bluffing. And there's a little bit of intrigue there as well. Uh, you've got the aspects of trying to get a bunch of coins to give you some more flexibilities of being able to go over certain items, but still maybe even get by yourself down and still probably have maybe the most at the end without going over, which is cool. Uh, you've got the aspects of, hey, I don't have any cards that I want. I'm going to put it here to draw some cards. Sometimes you're doing it for the ability. Sometimes you're not. Because when you add to that pile, it's raising the stakes, which might be helping somebody else out. It's very intriguing. I like the drafting aspect there. I love drafting in games. And it's quick and easy at the beginning of the rounds. Uh, this game has a lot to think about. We found it very cerebral, very quiet, uh, very thinky type of a game. So it was much more thinky than I expected. It's also much more of a mathematical puzzle than I had expected. This game is pretty mathy. I mean, you're like thinking about using the cleric and you're like, well, if I put this here, I'll take this low one here and put it in front of me and that will add me up to this. And then I have this in my hand and later I can play this. There's a lot of mental gymnastics you're thinking about before you do your turn. And you really can't do your turn to the person in front of you does because that could totally change what you're gonna do. So there could be a little bit of downtime here when you're playing with four players since there's a lot of thinking and the board changes every round, uh, every turn. But overall, it's, it's a very solid game. But if you don't like any intrigue, if you don't like games that could possibly slow down a little bit with a lot of thinking, and if you don't like doing a lot of math, it's probably not the game for you. But if none of those scare you away, this is an excellent game that I highly recommend, and that's Capital Lux. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.